and they they remember everything. Oh, they remember everything. Everything. You everything. Spend, everything. You spend everything. so much time with your PCs. So much time. What's going on, y'all? 12 Friday here with Future DDS. Tyler Brown here at Future DDS. And today, we take you through a day in the life of clinic. Yep. Let's go. All right, so if this is your first time visiting our channel, what Terrell and I do is we make videos for pre-dents to help them get into school, as well as give everybody a look at um, what it's like to be a dual school student. So if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button below, and also hit the notification bell so that you know whenever we post new content. So unfortunately, we can't actually take you guys into clinic. You know, it's a lot of, yeah, a lot of violations <laughs> and whatnot, but We'll definitely, you know, take some time and walk you through what a typical day in clinic is like. The time slots for the clinic are, you know, they kind of restrict your your schedule for the for the week. So Monday through Thursday, we have nine to twelve, nine o'clock appointments, one o'clock appointments, and then four thirty appointments. So they're about three hours, except for the four thirty, which you end at seven. So it's so like two and a half, a little shorter. And then on Fridays, we only have the nine o'clock and then the one o'clock. So it's a very short day on Fridays, but. Don't sleep on Fridays. You can you can optimize and maximize like the amount of points you get and the amount of patients you're able to see by making sure you're booking patients in the day. Right. Also, a little thing. So uh, we tell you all that sometimes people don't necessarily go to classes. They might just let you capture at home. You are not allowed to schedule a patient whenever there is a class going on. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't go to that class, you're still not able to um, book a patient during that time slot. So, um, especially in the beginning of the year, you know, we got a list of our patients and we called them up and we would have to schedule them. And so what we basically do is we go online, we look at our schedules, we say, hello patient A, does this time work for you? If they say yes, I look at my schedule and say, okay, this works for me as well, great. So then we go online into our uh, Axiom is what we use, the program that we use, and we, uh, we do a request to actually book that appointment. Now, the thing about request is, you might not get that request depending on how many chairs are available. For instance, in the beginning, you have to do an exam. And when everybody was going into clinic for the first time, everybody was doing a bunch of exams. So there are only so many exam chairs. So even though you and patient A, you all might have a, a, um, an opening together, you know, we might be able to, I might be able to see you on Tuesday at nine. I'll look and there'll be no chairs available. So then you also have to think, well, if everybody's continuously booking out these exam chairs, when is the next time that there will be a free exam chair? And sometimes that might be two weeks down the road. So you kind of have to get a little strategic about um, your, your scheduling process and, and just really pay attention to little things like that. So now you actually got the patient scheduled to come in. Uh, you know, you show up to the clinic early. Of course, always show up early. Okay. Pull up the axiom, pull up the patient charts. Make sure you know you're checking the dates on when they had their last radiograph. You're doing a lot of things just to make sure you're ready for when the patient gets there. You can get the ball rolling and just uh, you know hit the ground running, like like we said. So you go in, you'll set up the operatory, basically following infection control. You know, taping up all the operatory things. You want to get you know the basic setup uh, cassette. You know, so you can get your mirrors, you get your your probes, everything you're gonna have to do, especially for an exam. You know, you gotta you gotta do little things like check for probing depths and check radiographs, make sure those are good and updated. So if that's the case, you might want to go downstairs and set up an operatory for radiographs early as well before the patient gets there. So it would just save you 10, 15 minutes here instead of having the patient waiting around while you're setting up the operatory and right. getting ring kits and all that. Have all that ready and prepared. One of the biggest things is just being preemptive, uh, knowing what you have on your schedule coming up, knowing what, exactly what you'll need so you don't have to keep running back and forth yep. to the dispensary Huge. and having that set up early so that once you know the patient comes in, you go get them from the front, you actually go sit them down, you can go through their health history and you know check up, make sure there's nothing uh, that's changed with that patient going into it and then you'll be able to get uh, you know a start from your the provider or the PC, uh, that's what we call on our floors, our PC, who uh, basically runs the floor and just manages uh, all the students that are, you know, have appointments at that time. Right, right, and so like Terrell said, you have to get that start swipe. So literally, once the patient walks in, well the patient checks in in the front, mm -hmm. comes around, we take them to our operatory, sit them down, we take their health history, or we make sure that there's no recent changes, like Terrell said, and we check the blood pressure, just to make sure um, that everything is under control. Then we have to go to our PC, and the PC is basically the, the head of our clinic. Um, we go to them and we say, hello, Dr. X, uh, can I please get a start swipe? So they come back to our operatory, introduce themselves to the patient, and they let us begin the procedure or the exam, whatever we're gonna do. 
So that's one of the things about clinic. Every single step needs a start swipe. You gotta have it approved. You have to have it approved. Um, granted, definitely necessary. You know, we're not oh, doctors yeah. yet, so um, having the PCs or whatever faculty checking on us is definitely, definitely appreciated, but it slows down the process a lot. Because granted, we have a lot of students and we have a, a fair amount of, of faculty walking around, but you know, a lot of questions are being asked to them and they might get tied up. So then it becomes a waiting game. And you might be in line behind two, pay, uh, two different students, uh, but that's just how it goes. So yeah, so you have to look for little things to make sure that you're able to provide the best care, but also be efficient with your time. Yep. And so keep that in mind whenever you get to clinic. Always be ready, like Terrell said, because those, those swipes, they take up a lot of time. Yeah, and know what you can do in the meantime, waiting for that swipe, you know? Exactly. You need to take algebra impression, take the algebra impression while you're waiting. Right. You need to do these little things, explain a, maybe a future procedure to the patient, do that right now while you're waiting to get that swipe. But like he said, little things, because you can't do anything major. You right. can't start to actually drill on the patient. <laughs> no, no, you know, no. you have to wait for those bigger things, but if you have to ask something about, or like he said, inform the patient about what we're gonna do today, for example. Mm -hmm. You can do that while you're waiting on the PC or whoever you need to be swiped by. So at the end of the day, basically it's like a checkout process. And when we mean checkout, it's like one thing they all they stress for us is making sure that your case note is extremely, extremely detailed and everything that you did that day, anything that may have went wrong or went very well, whatever, whatever went on that day, you have to make sure you document that. Yeah. Uh, so you want to write a really good case note. You want to make sure that you're also scheduling the patient for their next appointment yeah. and kind of, you know, being proactive about getting them in for the future and seeing when they'll be available. So you want to save a little bit of time towards the end of your appointment, uh, that three hour block, you know, maybe save 30 minutes at the end so you can make sure you get everything swiped and get your day notes swiped. Uh, and you know, just have everything good. You don't want to be rushing with the patient, trying to explain things to them. You don't want to be rushing, trying to get the PC, especially when you know it's a nine o'clock appointment. Everybody's trying to go to lunch by twelve because they're to be back at one o'clock. Right. You know, you want to make sure you're being proactive and being cognizant of your time, so that the checkout process is efficient as possible. So you know, you finish your patient, you take uh, their their form to the DPA or like the office manager or assistant. Basically, who helps you with your schedule and everything. Let them know that they're good. Make sure everything's good financially with the patient or insurance or whatever you need to do. And then you check them out and you let them know, okay, okay, well, I'll give you a card. If you have any other questions, like the, your next appointment is written on the back. And obviously my number, if you don't have it already, or if you, you know, lost phone, whatever the case may be, uh, the, my number's on the front. Call me if you have anything. And this is important because, you know, if you do a filling, the filling might fall out or, you know, if he has sensitivity with the feeling that the patient has sensitivity with it, they can get in touch with you easily and you can get them back in and correct anything, you know, that they may have an issue with, so. Right. All right, so now the patient has left, you've checked them out, but now you have to go and work on your lab work. So oh, literally, yeah. our lab is right down the hall from our clinic. And so we'll pick up everything, we'll clean up our operatory, make sure that it's um, ready for the next, not ready for the next patient, but clean for the next patient. Right. Um, and then we'll go to lab and we'll do our lab work. And that might be pouring up a cast or pouring up an impression, whatever it may be. Um, or even working on another patient's work. You know, if you're doing a, a set of full dentures, or, exactly. Yeah. You might have to do wax rims, you might have to do all these different things. Um, so yeah, you have to always think about Okay, you have to plan your day accordingly because yeah. those things do take time. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot of time, a lot of time. Yeah. So always keep those things in mind, always keep those things in mind. And a lot of the times you kind of want to do the work, if possible, from that day, that, that day. day. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's easier said than done, yeah. but if you're able to, make sure you do that just to keep up, to, keep up with everything because you never want to delay your patient's care because you're lacking. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it is what it is. Some you things, know? you know, force you to do it. Like, you got to pour up the alginate within 30 minutes to yeah. an hour or, you know, you won't have an accurate cast. Yeah. yeah, There's little things that force you to just go in there and get it done right then. Uh, but it's just it's just good to create that habit. Just yeah. make it a habit to do it. So, do know. it right then. Yep. Get it done. And you'll be, you know you'll be prepared the next yeah. time they come in. You'll have the cast mounted. You'll have all these little things that could, you know, alter you being able to give them the, you know, the best care right then. And also, you know, you want to look professional around your, your you know, your, your future colleagues and exactly. your professors that have been teaching you. Make sure you're presenting your best foot, you know, putting your best foot forward. So. And your patient. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, <laughs> yeah. your patient, obviously, they, but. If you don't look prepared, yeah. they notice. Yeah. And even if you are prepared to them, because they may not know any different, your faculty is definitely going to 
maybe you know maybe let be less willing to help you out or you know give you you know make grow you a little bit more to make sure you actually know what you're doing because you don't you're not presenting everything uh beforehand they have yeah. to ask you a lot of questions and where's this where's that like be prepared and they they remember everything oh they remember everything Everything. You Everything. Spend, Everything. You spend Everything. so much time with your PCs. So much time. Man. So, hey, just keep that up. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're giving you little gems. Just advice. Just advice, We're man. giving you little gems. You take it. Leave it. Do what you want. Do what you want with it. <laughs> but we put it out there. Okay, y'all. So that wraps it up. That's pretty much, uh, you know, the top of the day of a day in clinic or at least, you know, uh, an appointment in clinic and, you know, just... Make sure that you're on top of everything before you go in and make sure at the end of the day, you've taken care of everything you need to do then so you can just be efficient uh, with that, that short amount of time. I mean, those three hours really go by fast. So just make sure you're extremely efficient and know exactly what you're doing before you go in. But like I said, that's gonna be it. That's gonna wrap it up. If you have any questions for us, any comments for us, you know, any advice about how to be a more efficient in clinic, you right. know, add it down to the comments. Uh, and if not, if you have a more personal question, go over to Instagram, shoot us a DM at underscore future DDS. You know, shoot us a DM, like I said, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, and as always, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so you know whenever, whenever we post up new content. And hit the like button, smash that, smash that thumbs up, so you know, especially if you like these videos, you know, we'll keep bringing them to you. Yep. All right now, see y'all.